Let's take a look at the best lifts on the market today. The most common personal lift available that Medicare pays for would be a manual patient lift. It's going to lift the entire user with the sling. It's a very simple design, so it's just a hydraulic crank that we're going to slowly crank to begin raising the user up. One like this, fairly inexpensive, and then Medicare will do it as a 13-month rental, and then it becomes the client's once it passes that 13-month. A lift like this usually retails for around eight to $900. The biggest downside to a manual lift is that the raise and lower are all over here, while the user is going to be at the end over there. Manual lift needs less maintenance because there's no batteries to charge, but takes more effort to use. So with an electric patient lift, you have a hand control. With this hand control, we're able to be here by the individual while we're raising or lowering. The benefit of this is that we're able to grab onto the user and the sling if we're going into a wheelchair or a bed, and this way we're able to lower them in the proper position. It's important to use a personal lift because you don't want your loved ones or your caregiver to develop a bad back. So with the traditional electric patient lift like this one, they usually make them out of steel. So your average weight on one of these is going to be about 120 to 150 pounds. They do lift very high with the electric actuator and they all come with a rechargeable battery. When we jump over to the MoLift here, this is only about 52 pounds because they switch over to lightweight aluminum. They use a lithium battery, whereas the other one would use lead acid, so it's close to half the weight at only about five pounds. And the lift like this is also able to fold, so that way it can be traveled with in uh, the back of a car, or it even has a case that it comes with to put it on an airplane. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we lower that boom all the way down. So once we lower this all the way down, we have a plastic piece here where this hooks into. Then in the back of the lift here, there's one lever. We're going to lift it all the way up. Put one foot onto it and pull it up and push forward. It's going to come all the way down. And then there's the hydraulics here, which bring the legs in and out. So we're just going to bring the legs of it all the way in. And then the final step is that there's just a bungee cord here. So we're just going to tie that around the wheels just so it doesn't open up. And now we're able to stand the unit as well. And if we did need to wheel it around like a dolly almost, you can also dolly it around as well. I need a lift that's lightweight and portable because I love to travel. With any electric lift, just in case anything fails, they have a red lever here by the actuator. So with this red lever, you're able to manually lower down if at any point the unit may fail or the actuator may fail. So on the MoLift, it's a little different of a motor, but again, it has that same red lever. So we would pull this up, and as long as there's weight on the boom here, it would begin slowly lowering down. On a full charge, on average, they're good for about 30 to 40 lifts. So if you're using it daily, every other day or every night, just depends on how often you're using it. The most common sling is going to be the full body. And this one comes with or without that hole there, which is the commode opening. With a sling like this, as soon as that user goes into, say, a wheelchair or a chair, you're not able to, at that point, remove this from under them. So it's going to be under them throughout the day as they're doing things. The alternative sling is called a cross leg sling. So this one comes in a U shape. And this sling was designed to be removed and put onto the user easier from a chair position. So if the user is seated in the chair, you'd lean their back forward. This drops behind them, and then we're going to go underneath each of their thighs and then lift up from there. Filling lifts with a remote can provide you lots of independence. So another form of patient lifts would be what they call a ceiling lift. A common ceiling lift is what they call like the arching ceiling lift. So it's almost a U shape where you have the bed on one side and the wheelchair on the other. The alternative kind that they do is the ones where it's actually mounted into the roof of the home and it's on a track. So we're able to lift that user from their bed onto the track and then they begin sliding across the home, either say to their wheelchair, into their bathroom, to their shower. But one like that's a lot more complicated and it's not as common. I need one of those. They can just lift me up and take me wherever I want to go. For electric folding, it's the Hoyer Advance E and uh, the MoLift. Hoyer is about 65 pounds, whereas the MoLift's the lightest on the market, 52 pounds. Retail's right around 4,500. The Hoyer is right around 2,700. These type of medical equipment needs to be a lot more affordable. 
Medicare is, of course, out the question, but some secondary insurances are private insurances. If the justification is met, they would cover it. The biggest thing with insurances is that everything they cover needs to be for in-home use, for you to perform your ADLs, your aids to daily living. So with something that's foldable, it's kind of hard to get it covered just because they know if it's foldable, you're using it to travel and go outdoors, which is not what their criteria is for. These aren't luxury items. These are needed. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly, just because that's part of someone's life to just go out and enjoy the world, too. Brought to you by the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation and Gold Pictures.